about 10 years ago, I had this powerful spiritual experience because I had a breakdown. And that breakdown led me to realize how much I needed to change my life. My heart needed to change. I was angry. I was frustrated. I had a lot of issues. And um, I didn't understand what it looked like to completely be accountable for self. And so as I spent a little less than a year praying and praying and praying in my closet, um, something happened that was so marvelous that it changed my heart forever. And I was filled with love from the top of my head through my whole soul. And the love was so powerful that I knew Jesus Christ could do it all. I am a testifier of his power of changing hearts. I had a lot of pain. I suffered with a lot of pain. And when I started to feel that love, I knew there was something more that God had to offer me. And since then, I have wanted to share that message because I wanted everybody to take of it. And I believe that everybody can. It's just a decision of desire to want to and to be willing to look in the mirror at yourself and not those around you. And when you're able to do that, everything changes and the Lord will have love and mercy on you. And so I started a little bit writing. I just want to start with a little bit and then I love hearing them speak. Um, this is just a little part of a book that I started writing. Um, it's something about a change of heart. I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet. But what I had learned from my experiences, this was a little part that I felt inspired to write one day. After going through all these things of being a victim, I had learned Melanie is a fighter and never gives up. Why? Giving up means unhappiness, hopelessness, and bitterness. I was not and am not willing to settle for less. Father told me who I am. He tells me what I can become. Why would I listen to any other voice? I have suffered too much to walk away now. I have suffered a lifetime of pain. I'm done fighting. I am surrendered. I am his. I have all the hope in the world because of my Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the way. There is no other way. I have tried so many other ways, and they do not work. I will follow him. I will love him forever. He changed me. He snatched, he snatched my soul from hell and brought me to his bosom. He filled me with his love that would change me forever. He can do it. He has done it, and he will continue to do it for eternity. He is my God, and I am his daughter. Yes, a daughter of the living God. I know whose I am. I know who has my back. He is magnificent. He is to be praised forever. He overcame the world, a world of sin who betrayed him, yet he partook of the bitter cup and drank for us. Why would you not choose Jesus when it is a choice? Why would you not choose the most powerful being in the universe, the God who created heaven and earth, the creator of our souls? We are his. And this is what came to me as I was writing and the spirit filled my soul, is I knew that I am his. And he has changed me forever. Does that mean I have challenges still? Yes. I want you to listen to my friends also because their experiences are so powerful that it gives me hope of what journey I'm on because they have unique experiences and I am blessed and privileged to know them. So, you know, and please feel free to ask questions as well. Um, Thor, do you want to kind of start a little bit? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in order to keep the time, so just be like 15 minutes or something. Kind of a little bit, 10, 15. I'll, I'll, I'll try to be quick, but also to the point where, so my prayer is that my story will impact somebody's life. I pray that the Holy Ghost will flow through me to, to speak to you on a spiritual level, and to, my, my prayer is that you would act upon um, some of the things that would, that would, uh, that would change your, your journey. Uh, so, I've had um, some pretty cool experiences where um, I've had Heavenly Father get involved in my life. Heavenly Father is uh, the most kind, loving uh, Father in the world. Um, I've had experiences with Heavenly Mother. She is so incredibly loving that... It uh, has changed my life. Uh, 
Jesus Christ is a big, a big part of this. Uh, the angel Michael become warriors. Um, but just so, I just wanted to give you a prelude before I started my story. So, anyways, when I was 12 years old, um, I grew up on the Indian reservation, and uh, the culture on the Indian reservation was that everybody spoke and everybody drank. So. By the time I was 12, um, I was a smoker and a drinker, and that was the culture. So everyone did it, and there really wasn't any rules that you weren't supposed to. So I, um, I started drinking and smoking, and, and that was part of my life. I, um, and then as I became more of an alcoholic, by the time I was 18, 19, 20, um, I, could, uh, I started falling into a lot of pitfalls. So. Um, one of the unique experiences, as I tell my story too, is that I see the spirits coming into the room to actually coax people into what they're doing. So when we hear about spirit prison, it's very real. And that Satan is here, and his minions are here. So as I started drinking and falling into the traps, you could see the spirits of people that were deceased around the people that were about to drink alcohol and different things and would help them to lure them in and then as they did then you could see the spirit kind of fading it wasn't as bright um, so anyways uh, to get into when, when things really started to change for me was near the um, near the end of my, my drinking um, I had gotten to a point in my life where I really didn't even care if I lived anymore. It, it, the drinking and drugging just gets to the point where it just suppresses your spirit so much that you can care less if you're alive. So I had planned it all out that I was going to uh, end my life. And Satan had always been around me, kind of in the, in the back drifts of different things, kind of watching over me. But on the night that I decided to end my life, um, there he was with me. And he was like, just do it, just kill yourself. And um, I pulled out a 12-gauge shotgun, I pulled it up to my head, I was ready to blow my brains out, I was ready to end this life. And I guess there was a, I guess there was a different plan for me. Because um, that was the night that Heavenly Mother came into the room. And as Satan looked at her, he ran out of the room. And she said, Dora, I love you so much, and it's time to start our new life. And that's the night that would forever change my life, and that's the night that would forever change my testimony to each and every one of you to have faith in this journey, because it's very real. The following day, I got up, and I drove my car, and I was getting ready to go to the next big party, and out on the road came a blood flew everywhere, and <laughs> I got to the, the place where I was going to, and they were like, you've been saved. <laughs> the blood of Christ has been shed for you. you know? and I, I didn't really fully understand at the time, but... Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh... uh that night, I took the demon out of my body. I could see it left. Um, but the best part of everything is I started having faith that the system was real and that what God set up for me was I would start to get like this tree of life. And it would be about sacrifice and gratitude and all the different tests that we're going through on earth. They all have a purpose. So the, this big tree would come in front of me and it would be like gratitude. And I would have people around me that wouldn't show me any gratitude. And then I, and then the next couple months later, it would have like tons of gratitude. People would be like, thank you so much for your story. You're just a great guy. Thank you for hanging out with me tonight and different things. And then at the end of the test, it would be like, so what did you prefer better? Did you like the people with gratitude or no gratitude? And I would be like, well, obviously I like the gratitude. And then it would be like, okay, move on. And then I'd move on to my next test. Um, and it was just one after another of all these different tests. And then I would have to, to love myself in order to give love to others. So it's like I desperately prayed to 
Father, I cried many nights. I was like, when am I going to meet a girl and settle down? And he'd be like, Thor, you're not quite ready yet. And he would show me this big graph and it would say, you need to love yourself first before I introduce you to one of my beautiful daughters. You can't give love unless you have love. So then he would sit and show me like how involved he was in my life. And I would have hummingbirds that would come around me and people that told me they loved me. And just like, Thor, try it this way, and I would try it this way, and he would show me how I passed the test. And all along, I was learning, my heart was getting stronger and bigger with love. And then when it was filled with love, he said to me at a restaurant one day, there was a big checkered flag. He's like, Thor, you've been passing your tests. You're about to meet, you know, your wife. And, and then I met her like a few days later. But it's just so significant to me, like, when people say, how do you get from here to here? If you can see Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ and Heavenly Mother, and this earth was perfectly created for us to come to, exactly 93 million miles away from the sun. If it was any closer, we'd burn to death. Any farther, we'd freeze to death. There's a perfect alignment where it, it's on an axis and it's got a a magnet system where the rocks don't hit us. It's perfectly created with oxygen and carbon dioxide, every single thing in it. And if you can start to visualize that this was perfectly designed for me to come to at this exact time for this exact experience, and if I am willing to pass all the tests that I signed up for, I basically have won the lottery. If I pass the test, when I go back on the other side of the veil, all that the Father has will be given to his sons and daughters. I found the fountain of youth. My spirit goes on for eternity. I'll never die. My spirit will keep going and passing the tests and becoming to us salvation. I will have pure joy. No more Satan. Um... So as I see all of these things come in front of me, I'm like, Father, I want to pass my tests. I know that everyone has different tests, but I know that we need to understand these tests because it's exactly what I signed up for, for this exact time on this exact mission. And if I pass these tests, all these amazing things are coming. And I want to be part of your team because you created it. Satan, I... He's here for opposition. He can bruise my heels, but he can't crush my head. So many times that I was about to have huge blessings on my life, and Satan was so good with the natural man that he could just throw a party here and throw this here and throw this there and detract me from getting this amazing blessing. And that was part of his plan, was to, to stop us from getting this full exaltation, all this joy. But you can't hurt me anymore. Now that I know how you do this, and now I know you do this, and how, how you do this, you cannot hurt me anymore. Stand behind me. I don't want you in my life. I know that you're going to try to impact people around me. I know you're going to throw darts, but that's okay. You know what? I'm on this side. I've stood in rooms where people are sitting there, and family members that are angels that have came into the room, they whisper in their ear, and I see their spirits evolve a little bit more. I love to stand in the room when an angel comes in in the white silhouette. When they enter the room, all light drives out all darkness. No evil spirits are allowed in the room. And those angels literally can move heaven and earth and shake plans up like you wouldn't believe. After seeing some of the different angels and different things going on, I want to pass my tests and I want to be one of the angels that's able to come in and to help my family members out and the people around me and just to literally come in and BAM! There's no darkness can be in the room where the light just shatters everyone. That's where I want to be. Um, my message as a testimony of these things. I've had several near-death experiences, but I've made it and I'm on this, this side today. I promise you that our journey is very real and our eternal spirits are counting on it. As you see the battlefield around you, choose to be the one that's walking forward and not getting distracted by the evil spirits 
or fear and chaos. There is three voices that you will hear as you're on your journey. When the heavens are speaking to you, they are very clear, confident, and loving. Try it this way. Do it this way. They already know everything about you. They already know what to do. They know the plan. The human mind will evaluate things where it's like, should I or shouldn't I? I'm not quite sure. But I, to my understanding, this far on my journey, this is what I do. <laughs> and the longer you're on the journey, the more you see it, and the more you, you know, but... Um, and then... Um, Satan, whenever he's in the room, I can always feel the energy because there is chaos, drama, fear, destruction. He's always destroying. So you can always see who's been in the room. You can just feel like a negative energy. It's just... Um, I feel very, um, very grateful and to be a witness of, to be able to feel the energy of the room and then to see some of the things going on where I'm able to relay that back to others. So I hope the spirit that is felt tonight, where you felt that message, that um, I'm not the kind of person that would ever fail about something like this. This is very real, and it's awesome. God's plan is perfect. Every single thing that you are going through is real, and whether it's making you a warrior or more of a kind and loving person, all the people involved are just rooting you on. You've got family members that are around you. You've got guardian angels. You've got... Your spirit is a lot stronger than you even know when you signed up for the mission. I mean, you were already a mature spirit before you even came to Earth. And there's three levels of the celestial kingdom. So, anything you didn't know yesterday, that's fine. Tomorrow morning, there's going to be a blue curtain that's going to come up. And it's going to be a brand new day. And anything you didn't do right yesterday, you get a whole new chance today. It's like, all right, today I'm going to do it differently. And every single day you do it differently and differently. And then you pass the test and you're like, all right, keep moving on. I'm just marching down the field and I'm passing my tests. And, um, and even the bad experiences in life, you start to see some of the people around you, like friends or family, that are having struggles with those tests. But because you went through them, you have empathy for them, and you look at them, and you're like, hey, try it this way, maybe this way. You able, you are um, able to give somebody light that they can see it for themselves. And once you plant that seed, and the big puzzle goes up in front of you, and it's like boom, 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 all the pieces start to come together, then all of a sudden you see it, and it's, it's there, and you want others to see it. So I love coming to events like this, because... Every person that speaks, you're able to take a little piece of part of their journey and you get to see how God worked in their life, and it's like, wow. And then you get to see it through their spiritual eyes, and so I hope that that made a, a difference in, in your life tonight by, by some of my um, experiences. And um, if you have some questions for me later on or whatever after these guys talk, then I'll be here until probably about 8.30. So. Thank you so much. My name is Thor Michael Forsyth, and I appreciate your time tonight and letting me be part of your life tonight. I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, buddy. I'm going to hear you first. I just screwed it all up. You don't have to be the star of the show. Thank you, too, Prima Donna. were finally allowed to enter in the cave, and Joshua was at the helm. And their first job, their first responsibility was to purge Jericho. And the scouts went out and they saw that there were these gigantic walls and they were monstrous warriors and this was a very difficult task. And Joshua, who had been with Moses from the beginning, and was one of I believe two people allowed to actually entertain him because of everybody's, that generation's disbelief. He gathered the warriors of Israel together and he said, sanctify yourselves because on the morrow, the Lord will do wondrous things for you. We have been given a timeline by the prophet of God to sanctify ourselves. Uh, last week he said, uh, eat your vitamin pills and get plenty of rest <laughs> because things are gonna get very, very exciting. He said, if this year and next year, things are going to get very, very exciting. Now, the prophet of God, if you have ears to hear, gave us a timeline. This year and next year. 
things are going to get very exciting. It is time for us to sanctify ourselves. The waiting is over. The, the question is over. It's time for you to pick a side. And Joshua continues on in his little instruction with the Israelite warriors, and he says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That is the decision that I made a while ago. Um, and I had to travel a very, very hard road to get to that point. Um, I grew up in the church, uh, but I was not a very good Mormon. Uh, I, I could sure talk the talk, I could sure walk the walk, and I went on a mission and all that stuff, but I hadn't had my conversion process. Carried on with my life. Um, you guys all, most of you know my story. Uh, for those of you that don't, very quickly, um, I've been a soldier or a police officer my entire life. Six months after I got home off my mission, I joined the Army, and this is all I've ever done. Um, and I've been all over the world, and I've seen some pretty cool things, and I've done some pretty cool things. And I was wounded very severely in the line of duty back in 2013. I was in a fight with a drug dealer in a dark alley, it was just me and him. And I was wounded so severely that I lost the ability to walk. It took me about three years to learn to walk again. At that time, uh, my wife left me. Um, I got no support from, from the police department. They said it was a, a pre-existing condition. I wounded myself. They came to work and worked a 10-hour shift as a, as a cop. Um, and so when it was all said and done, I was homeless, crippled, unemployed, broke, and um, divorced. All the same time. And so you get to that point where there's nothing left in your life and you have to make a choice. And I chose victory and clawed my way out of it hand over hand. Found love again, rebuilt my life, um, rebuilt my finances, was honorably medically retired from the police department because I refused to give up. And I went to the Lord and I said, look, I thought we were good. You know, for the first 30 years of my adult life, I was this guy. You know, I was the sheepdog. I got between the wolves and the sheep. And I was really good at what I did. And I liked what I did. Jumping out of airplanes, kicking in doors, you know, fighting smash house football with, you know, drug dealers and, and uh, you know, traveling all over the world and just doing good deeds for other people. That, that was me. And and I'm only good at a few things, and that was it. That was one of them. And and I thought I thought we were good. I thought Heavenly Father and I had this deal. I would do this, he would make me good at this, and I would just keep doing this. And so when I lost everything, including my ability to be the sheepdog anymore, and everything that, that I needed in my life to make it possible for me to be this sheepdog, everything, gone. And I was convalescing in my mom's sewing room on a child's daybed, is where I ended up. I went from being a SWAT cop to an invalid, like that. And so I went back to Heavenly Father and I said, look, I thought we were good. I thought we had this, this agreement, you know, I was this guy and this was what I was supposed to do. And in his, in his way of answering my prayers, which he answers all of us specifically for how we need to hear it. He said, no, I allowed you to survive all of that so that you can do this now. This is your job now. So my job now is to wake up that warrior spirit inside of us to help us become who we were destined to become and to help who's ready to hear put themselves on that path of greatness, uh, that, that path of destiny that we have. Many of us have been preordained to do very, very amazing things here on this earth. Um, I heard a, a quote from Winston Churchill, and I actually printed it out and I wanted to bring it because I thought it was very applicable for what I'm talking about today. Let's see if I can find it here real quick. Winston Churchill, during the, the height of World War II, was trying to inspire the British people. Most of you know the story about the Battle of Britain and how they were being over, almost overrun by the Nazis. To every man there comes, and I say man, I mean mankind, to every man there comes that special moment when he is figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a special thing unique to him and fitted to his talent. Not a general sense, but specifically for that person. What a tragedy if that moment finds him unprepared or unqualified for the work, which would be his finest hour. Can you imagine 
having to stand in front of Heavenly Father and account for what you've done, knowing fully that you were given this special job that only you could do. This would have been your finest hour. You, at that moment in time, would have been the most important thing in his kingdom. Because you and only you could have accomplished this mission. And you failed it. Because you didn't take the time to figure out who you are. You didn't sanctify yourself. You didn't prepare yourself. You didn't trust in our Heavenly Father. You didn't act like a warrior. There's only one reason why you're on this earth right now. Because you were a warrior in heaven. You were prepared in the pre-existence for this moment in time. To come down on this earth and to face Satan in open warfare. Because of how valued you were in the pre-existence. President Nelson, six months ago, looked your children in the eye and called them the Lord's Youth Battalion. He was very specific. He doesn't just, President Nelson doesn't just use words. Okay, he is a very intelligent man, and every word that he uses is thought over and considered. And he used a military formation to describe what he means now. A battalion of youth. Now, we have an example of this in, the free, in, in scriptures. Before, there was a, a group of young men that were called to serve. And we all know this story, or most of us know this story. What are we talking about here? The stripling warriors, right? Now, if you have ears to hear, what did the president of the church, the prophet of God, just call our children? The modern day stripling warriors. He's calling for his battalions, his youth battalions. If they are the modern day stripling warriors, if you have ears to hear, what did he just call us, the parents of these children? The mothers and fathers that prepared those stripling warriors for combat. Physical, emotional, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual combat. What is our responsibility as the parents of these stripling warriors? To prepare them for combat on all four of those fronts. The stripling warriors in the Book of Mormon did everything to exactness. They didn't come to camp and learn how to do everything to exactness. They showed up that way because of what their mothers had taught them, because of how the examples their fathers had shown them. If you have ears to hear, you have been called to the work. You have been enlisted in the Lord's army to train the youth battalions and prepare them for combat, mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual. And if you are not prepared to do that, then it's time for you to sanctify yourself, to cleanse the inner vessel. Because it doesn't matter what you want to do in this world, if you don't have that personal connection with our Heavenly Father, if you are not prepared, like President Nelson said, to receive personal revelation in your life, then you will not survive spiritually. Those are his words. And if the parents of the stripling warriors, the modern-day stripling warriors, cannot survive spiritually, where are these children going to learn to fight? Are they going to learn it from school? Are they going to learn it from the government? Are they going to learn it from entertainment and from their cell phones? This world has been designed to destroy them. Everything in this world has been designed to distract them away from this most important job, as President Nelson described. The single most important job on this earth is to prepare this earth for the second coming. Everything your child does, participates in, listens to, goes to, everything is designed to distract them, to destroy them. Satan has prepared this battle space for 6,000 years. And every ambush, every trap, every choke point, every kill box, every attack point on this battle space that your children are under, he has prepared this for hundreds if not thousands of years. We didn't wake up one morning and just have a problem with pornography. This is something that has been going on for hundreds if not thousands of years to attack the soldiers before they ever get onto the field. We didn't have just wake up one morning and have a problem with multiculturalism or or having a hard time even defining the difference between man and woman. This is something that he started in motion to destroy this generation, because he knows who we are. We faced him in battle before, each of us, specifically, hand-to-hand -hand combat, or we wouldn't be here. If we weren't the most valiant in the pre-existence, he wouldn't have even brought us here at this time. Some of you literally put your hands on evil and walked them out of heaven. And that is why Heavenly Father trusts you so much. And that is why Satan pushes down so hard on you. Because he knows exactly who you are and exactly how powerful you are. 
Now, a lawyer looks at that, a, a civilian would look at that and go, oh, woe is me, look how, look how difficult my life is. Oh, I'm broken, I'm unemployed, oh, this whole, this is horrible. A warrior goes, hey, I'm going to wear this contempt like a badge of honor. That tells me exactly who I am. If Satan has focused so much energy on me, that, that is a testament, that is a witness to you about how important you are and how powerful you are to me, and how dangerous you are to this planet. That is how a warrior looks at things. Now, the prophet of God has called for his words. He has sounded assembly. He has blown the trumpets and beaten the drums. It is time to become who you are. It is time to wake up, shed off the earthly man, move up from the telestial to the terrestrial state. Do not be led, but lead. That is why you are here. That is who you are. When you feel that inside of you, when you hear that, and you feel that burning inside of you, that is the captain's call. That is the trumpet to assemble. That is your warrior spirit rising up inside of you. Don't deny it. Don't fight against it. Embrace it. Accept who you are. And move forward with faith. My name is Jason Allen. I go all over the country and I motivate people. I inspire people to greatness. And if you guys have any questions about this stuff and the process that I went through to get to this point... I would love to answer them to you. Thank you. Let's be really quick so you guys can ask some questions. I am a witness of Jason now. I'm a witness to everything that he said. I can but to what he says about what the prophet says and about what the Lord is telling us and about the warrior spirit inside of us. Right? My job, according to Jesus Christ, is to wake up the women warriors. Because I, too, have gone to the bottom edge, just like Thor, I'm a witness of his, of his testimony. I'm a witness of your testimony. I, too, have seen the resurrected Jesus Christ, and he has told me my mission. And he has sent me to help people and lift them in their missions. And so I testify about that war. That's what I feel like, too. When Jason starts talking, I just start pounding my head. <laughs> Um, I love to hear. I love to hear him speak. Um, we go through a very. I'm just a normal person that was grew up in the church, grew up in Southern California, went to Utah, went to BYU, did all those things, right? But my life turned bad. It turned really bad. And like I said, I wanted to give up. And like, where I was ready to go to the other side. I'm like, this is way too hard. I didn't sign up for this. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be out of here. And I, would, I didn't want to kill myself. I wanted to pray and have the Lord just take me. Like, as a sweet mercy, just take me. Done. Kind of, I'm out of this game. And he showed me myself as a warrior in the pre-existence. As a warrior. Like a beast. Like, I fought with Satan. He hates me. I did all these things. And so he showed that to me. So that I would put on me. <laughs> I was crying in the temple all day long in this lunch room, bawling my eyes out. People coming up, like, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. This is her crying all the time. But he showed me so that I, too, could be the warrior that he sent me here to do. And do I want to go back and say, I can't do this? It was too hard. I didn't do it. No, none of us want to go back and do that. We came here to fight this war. And what I know directly from Jesus Christ, and angels from on high go have come to minister to me. Okay? The time is now that this war is on and it has started. And what Jason gave us about a timeline is accurate, true, and correct. These things will start happening in the next two years, and things are going to change, and we need to be ready for that change. And how we do that? We sanctify ourselves. We turn our lives completely over to Christ, and we let him build the warrior from within. And I will say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You guys can ask questions. I like them. Yeah. And we ran to each other. Why can you tell us about the fact that you are um, the human power of God? How, who, how, what, who, however, G.
Jesus Christ sends to me. So I pray who he wants me to go to, and he sends people to me through various means. The love comes at the temple, so that's the story of Jason and I. So I have some women that I know. <laughs> 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 um, Jason, I was I was sent to the temple on a certain day to that there would be a message for me from the angel Moroni. On a certain day, go to the temple on this day, and I went to the temple on that day, and I'm fully expecting the Lord to send me a messenger because that's what He told me. So I went to the temple, and I we had done the initiatories, and I went to the celestial room, and I was with my friend who was also with me and aware that we were waiting for a message from the angel Moroni, and. Jason Mao walked into the celestial room. I didn't know who he was, although we had been in the same ward before a long time ago. Um, he walks in, and my friend goes, "Oh, that's that guy who writes books about Moroni." And I was like, "Oh!" Uh, yeah. So my my feet, feet, feet spirit is just like burning within me, right? And like so my whole spirit is just like burning. I'm like, "Oh, we're gonna have to go talk to him." Oh, I hate to go talk to people I don't know. And you're not like to just walk up to people, interrupt them in the celestial room while they're just pondering and. So I just was going to guys. So I told the Lord, I said, if we're supposed to talk to him, then make him come talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> you send him. You send him to us. We're supposed to talk to him because I don't even want to men in the slush room and just say hi. Whatever. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't talk to him. But he had recognized Nicole, who he knew was my friend. Because they were there. And so I, he gets up to And it was super funny because we went in and we sat in the slush room. And I never, we never sit on that side. And then we're sitting in this chair, and the spirit told me, it's like, move to the couch. Like, All right, I'll move to the couch. Like, I don't know why. It's makes a big difference. I'll move to the couch. Like, not that I'm not used to hearing these things already, and I don't know why I even bought it, right? So I just moved to the couch. And Jason had walked just right past us on the couch and sat right next to um, the chairs next to us. So um, he got up to leave, and he didn't know why he had come to, to the temple that day, but someone had sent him to the temple that day. So he didn't feel like until that part, but um, he just got up and I, we got up to shake his hand and I'm like, hi, and you have a message for me from Moroni. So he was probably thinking, what is this crazy lady? <laughs> <laughs> and we started talking. <laughs> and we started talking and, and I got to hear his story and, and that kind of stuff. And, so, and then at the end of that, he's like, well, I need to get used with some like my people. I said, the Lord sent me because I'm supposed to find these women that he sent me to or sent them to me. And he said, um, he sent me to Melanie. Good and, job. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how Melanie and I met. And uh, uh, he sent her my information. She emailed me that day. She said, I'm doing a class on this Thursday. You should come. It's at the church. I'm going to say something. Oh, so far away. Okay. Okay, Heavenly Father. Like, I've got to get a babysitter. I've got to do all these things. So, but then I saw her, and I knew that she was one of the women that I was supposed to uh, be involved with, and stuff, and so, and she knew it when she saw me, and she gave her a little talk, and it was so cute, and I loved it, and then someone else got to speak, and she walked out to the Culver Hall, and I was like, where's the Culver Hall? And we went out there and talked to her, and we were instant sisters, because we knew each other before, and that's how the Lord works. So, he sends me to people, he, um, he's building his army. And he is calling people, and he is calling people to do certain missions that he needs done right now. Like, it has already begun, and he is calling people to do these missions, and they are to go forward in faith, and this is what he tells you. This is how the Lord works. He doesn't tell you exactly what you're going to do. He said, go forward, and I will tell you exactly what to do. So every day, I say, who do you need me to be? What do you need me to do? And I sent all these women. They just come, and I'm able to share my experiences with them and tell, share what the Lord has told me specifically about myself. And sometimes He gives me messages for them to help them in what their missions that they promised they would do before they came to this earth. And stuff they are experts at. And I love that one about Jesus said because, and what Laura says. We signed these contracts because we knew what we would be doing. We knew exactly what we would be doing. And the time is now to do those things that we promised that we would do. So, that's very important. She's actually the third person that I, this is happening. 